Yesterday, a federal oil spill task force announced that an estimated 172 million gallons of crude spilled into the Gulf before it was finally capped. But cleanup crews say they had been seeing far fewer oil slicks on the water than they were expecting, and BP says it plans to scale back some of its cleanup effort. So, where did the oil go? Well, In Focus reporter Ted Oberg joins us now with the answer, Ted. Dave, we went looking for this oil on beach water that families have been swimming in, and we tested water from Galveston to Gulf Shores, Alabama, all the way to Pensacola, Florida. On the way to get water samples, we had to dodge tar balls and stuff that looked like this. Nasty, nasty stuff. This from Gulf Shores. But when scientists looked at the water we came back with, it came up clean. And we wanted to put those results in focus. Just how could it be? out across the Gulf to see what was lurking offshore. Crossing parking lots full of sticky, tarry footprints. Beachside showers full of tarballed feet. And beaches spoiled with tar patties and tidal pools full of the ugly remnants of the nation's worst oil spill ever. Is, is this stuff dangerous to touch or not? Yeah. Must not be. All right, we'll find out. Cleanup crews were sucking up oil and scooping up tar balls. We fully expected to find oil and the chemicals it leaves behind in the water where families were swimming. How's it going? Good, man. You, you worried about what's in this water at all or no? Well, yeah, in a way, but it's, they don't look as bad as it did yesterday. Even our experienced environmental consultant expected to find oily remnants. You know, I was expecting to see higher levels of petroleum hydrocarbons. But the tests, down to five parts per million, couldn't find oil in the water samples. The tests were somewhat of a surprise. We expected to find remnants of oil in this water. As it turns out, there weren't many. It doesn't surprise me because I understand the effect of aging on crude oil. Rice chemical engineering professor Dr. George Hirosaki has decades of experience working with oil. And this is what's left over after the light ends have biodegraded. We asked him to explain how oily beaches can be right next to clean water. He says it's all about time and nature. It takes about a month for oil to travel the 50 miles from the wellhead to the beach, and nature's working the whole time. It's relatively light oil, and also the Gulf of Mexico is much warmer than in Alaskan regions and so you get a lot of biodegradation. In other words, that oil is a meal for microbes and this time of year... Water temperature now 88 degrees, right? Warm waters make microbes extra hungry, speeding up that process and the process of evaporation. But the sun and microbes don't take care of this. You don't want to eat it. Tar balls are made up of the stuff nature can't get rid of. The heavy tar is a mess, but it doesn't dissolve in water which is why they wash up right next to your beach chair. Wash them off your hands and feet and keep them off the kids' sandcastles. You should be okay, say the experts. The water may be clean, but it doesn't mean the beach always will be. Well, that's what's left over after the more soluble components dissolve. So it's sort of like salad dressing. Shake the oil and water you want, it'll eventually separate again, and that's what the tar balls are, that separated oil. Look, if you test stuff like this stick we found on Gulf Shores, you'll come up with all sorts of dangerous carcinogenic stuff, so don't play with those tar balls on the beach. There's also some concern among scientists about the oil and dispersant possibly settling on the Gulf bottom, mixing with sediment. But guys, if you want to see our results and see what the scientists told us, we've put our lengthy report online at abc13.com. Okay, good report. Thank you, Thank Ted. You.